September 30th, Blessed Francis of Calderola, Confessor, First Order. Francis was born at Calderola in the Diocese of Camerino. Faithful to the call of God to become a Franciscan, he joined the Friars Minor of the Province of the March. The great Saint James of the March and other holy men lived in the order at that time and were brilliant models for the younger brethren. Francis strove earnestly to follow in the footsteps of these saintly men. After his ordination to the priesthood, he was consumed with an insatiable zeal for the salvation of souls and was occupied for days at a time with preaching and hearing confessions. Then at night he would join in singing the praises of God and spent many an hour in private prayer for strength and blessing on his apostolate. Although Blessed Francis was a very learned man, he always addressed the people in language that was simple and not above their comprehension. He took great delight in relating anecdotes from the lives of the saints and in encouraging his listeners to follow their example. Wherever the blessed man went, he soon gained the confidence of the people, and as a result, he was able to reconcile many enemies and to settle long-standing feuds. He was also a very devout, devoted servant of the Mother of God, the Queen of Peace. With his own hands, he carved a statue of our Blessed Lady, which he presented to a confraternity he had founded. Because of the many miracles that were worked through its means, it became renowned as a miraculous image. On his return from exile in France in 1814, Pope Pius VII himself placed a golden crown on the head of this statue in the church of St. Nicholas of Tolentino. After Father Francis had reconciled many sinners to God through the intercession of the Mother of Mercy and had exhausted himself by his great labors, he slept the sleep of the just in the convent at Colfano in 1507. The veneration that had been accorded him because of the many miracles was approved by Pope Gregory XVI. On Miraculous Images the statue which Blessed Francis of Calderola gave to a confraternity as far back as 300 years ago is now venerated as a miraculous image. Such an image is not a miraculous image because of any inherent power that it possesses, like the holy sacraments, nor can it procure blessings for us as, for instance, the intercession of our Blessed Lady can. We call such statues or pictures miraculous images in the places where they are preserved miraculous shrines because it pleases God to grant special graces such as the cure of a disease or preservation from other grave ills to those who pray at these shrines and before the favored images. They are called miraculous images not because they work miracles but because God works miracles at such places at his pleasure. In some instances, the miracles have been so numerous and so extraordinary that the images have been crowned by the Pope in thanksgiving for God's bounty to men, as was the case with the statue of Blessed Francis. Who shall venture to speak of it as unreasonable if we have special confidence when we pray before such images? Consider that such confidence must be directed towards God alone. It is He who alone does wonderful things. Psalm 71, 18. When and where He will do them is reserved to His secret judgment. St. Augustine says, God is everywhere, and we can pray to Him in all places, but He works His miracles only where it pleases Him to do so. In the Old Testament, God himself caused a brazen serpent to be set up by Moses as a miraculous image against the bite of the serpent. 
When they who were bitten looked upon it, they were healed. Numbers 21, 9. In the Christian era, some of these venerated pictures and shrines have been transported to their present locations in a miraculous manner. For example, the Holy House of Loreto and the famous picture of Our Lady of Good Counsel at Genizano. Would it not be stupid on our part and a sort of obstinacy not to pray in our special needs at such shrines if we have the opportunity to visit them? Consider that when we cannot visit such places in person, it is quite in order to expect the graces which are granted at the actual shrine in answer to prayer before a reproduction of the miraculous image. Whoever would like to attend Holy Mass but is prevented from doing so can obtain many graces by reciting the prayers at home and assisting at the Holy Sacrifice in spirit. In like manner, may he hope to be answered who kneels in spirit before a miraculous image and begs God to grant his petitions. That is why we find reproductions of Our Lady of Perpetual Help, Our Lady of Good Counsel, and others in so many churches. It is likewise good to pray before such images in our homes. Pray therefore, Pray there for help in your special needs. Pray above all for the grace to remain faithful to God under all circumstances, and never to turn from him when crosses and temptations befall you. Prayer of the Church O God, who didst give to thy church a worthy servant and blessed Francis, thy confessor, and didst clothe him with the extraordinary grace to settle quarrels. Grant us, through his merits and intercession, that being strengthened in thy love, we may never be separated from thee by any temptation. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Blessed Francis of Calderola, pray for us.